fortunate to be in the Valley for the last 20 years as both an entrepreneur and a venture investor, it's probably no surprise that I spend a lot of my time thinking about technology and entrepreneurs. But lately, given the discussion in this election cycle, I've been spending a lot of my time thinking about the true meaning of the American dream and how we, as entrepreneurs, can help recharge it. Now, I know some of you might be thinking that the American dream is a pretty dated concept, so what could that possibly have to do with high-tech and startups? But actually, if you do the research, the core of the American dream is about opportunity and growth, and that very much is at the core of entrepreneurship as well. But you would be correct, it is a dated concept. It dates back 85 years to a book written by James Truslow Adams, and in it he wrote, Life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone with opportunity for each according to ability. And so for decades, that simple dream painted a picture of what anyone might hope to achieve here in America. And it fueled growth and it fueled our economy. But you might have noticed that the American dream over the last decade or so hasn't been doing so well. Our economic growth has slowed to a trickle, wages are essentially flat, and the middle class is shrinking. So it's no surprise that the American dream seems to be losing some of its power. Because growth is required for opportunity. But as I think about it, I know that for me, a belief in opportunity and a version of the American dream, and I'm gonna guess for many of you here as well, is what called us here to Silicon Valley. We believed that there was an opportunity to make our lives better, richer, and fuller. And if we were lucky, we might build something that might be even bigger. And so this is why it is now our turn to recharge growth and opportunity and recharge the dream. So how exactly do we do this? Well, Adams wrote some more, which is pretty instructive. To paraphrase a bit, because it's in Old English. It is a dream that each man and each woman will be able to work to the fullest of their ability to, to regardless of the circumstances of birth or position. So he wrote this in 1931. Each man and each woman, regardless of where you were born or your family's position. In many ways, it's still very forward looking now. Because you see, Adams understood the power of the dream would grow the more people who felt called to and included in the dream, and the more we could achieve together in pursuit of that dream. And this is where I see our opportunity. So Silicon Valley is already a magnet for talent, but we are tapping into only a fraction of it. And as many of the other speakers we'll talk to today, clearly technology and entrepreneurship is booming around the globe. From Beijing to Bangalore to Tel Aviv, the list goes on. And in each one of these places, they have a version of the dream fueling growth and their economy. And so this is our chance, our opportunity to show the world that there is still opportunity here for everyone, no matter your background and no matter the differences in paths that brought you here. And our challenge is to look past those surface differences like the paths and look a level deeper to find the things that make us the same. And that's our shared passion, our shared dream for building great teams, organizations, and technologies. And this is why I know together we can dream even bigger. So let me tell you a story that illustrates what I'm talking about. Recently I was at an event with two other tech executives and each one of us was asked to tell the story of what brought us here. Now the first person is from a third generation East Coast Navy family. So in many senses, the classic embodiment of the American dream. And from an early age, this person's dream was to race sailboats. And this interest in sailboat racing led them as an undergraduate to a class in the engineering department on statics and dynamics. And when the professor spotted this person's talent and suggested they consider going on to get a graduate degree in naval engineering and apply to MIT, it changed the course of this person's career. The second person told a really different story. This person grew up not too far from here in the Central Valley of California, but to parents who had given up on the idea of the American dream, or at least the idea that there was any opportunity for their children. So much so that promptly upon graduation, each child, promptly upon turning 18, each child was kicked out of the house. So this person's dream became one of economic survival. 
So they actually graduated from high school homeless, and then they went on to community college because that seemed like a path towards greater, greater economic stability. And so when a classmate offhandedly mentioned that engineers had the highest starting salary, this person immediately mentioned that they were going to be an engineering major, even though honestly at the time they had very little idea what that entailed. But fortunately for them, it was a perfect fit, and it was a great fit for both their talent and it provided them wonderful opportunities here in the Valley. And they went on to become an electrical engineering major from UC Davis. So who's the sailboat racer? It's Diane Green. She's a repeat serial entrepreneur, including being founder and CEO of VMware through its multi-billion dollar public offering and well beyond, and current head of Google's cloud business. The second person, the accidental engineer, Diane Bryant, head of Intel's data center business and responsible for over $4 billion in revenue. I tell these stories because they paint an important point about opportunity and talent. And the point about talent is, who could have known in advance how to spot this talent? They had very different paths and very different surface characteristics, but they are both incredibly successful technologists. And honestly, if you close your eyes and conjure in your mind a Silicon Valley entrepreneur or tech executive, I'm gonna guess neither one of the Dianes, or me for that matter, is oh, one of the first five or 25 things that pops into your head. But we are, all three of us, living examples of the American dream and the power of entrepreneurial builders to create growth and opportunity in our economy. I emigrated to the United States when I was three years old with my parents from Jakarta. We fled the country because it was going through political upheaval and the ethnic Chinese were being targeted. Back home, my mother had been a nurse and my father a dentist, but they started over again as a waitress and a dishwasher in a Chinese restaurant outside of Detroit. Eventually, my father went back to school to re-earn his degree at SUNY Buffalo and opened up his own dental practice in a small town not far away with my mother as his office manager. And so like many immigrant children, my parents had very high expectations of what I should be able to achieve here in America. And they expected me to be either a doctor, a dentist, or an engineer. And although I do love math and science, for those of you who know me, the sight of blood makes me want to pass out. So I, I, no surprise, I skipped medicine and I opted to study engineering. And I went to Brown University, which was in many ways my dream school, even though honestly we couldn't afford it. And my parents once again sacrificed and took out a second mortgage on our home and I took out significant student loans so that I could go there. But you see, there was a, a problem in the beginning because um, I wasn't actually doing very well in my engineering classes. In fact, um, one semester, not only did I earn a B, which many of you may know is also known as Asian F, <laughs> I earned an actual C. Now that grade is so bad, I personally am not aware of an Asian name for that one. <laughs> Meanwhile, in sociology class, I'm killing it. I got an A plus and I'm asked to be the teaching assistant. So during the next break, I sheepishly went to my father and I said I wanted to change my major from engineering to sociology. And he calmly replied that he was sure they offered sociology classes at the nearby community college. And I said, Dad, why would I leave Brown and move home and go to community college? And he didn't say a word. But I knew what he meant. My parents had not made tremendous sacrifices and taken great risks to pursue their version of the American dream just so I could give up at the first sign of difficulty or because I feared failure. And they didn't say it quite like this, but they expected me to follow the rules of the American dream, the same rules they played by. Work as hard as you can to the fullest of your ability to take advantage of the opportunities before you. So I stuck with engineering and I graduated from Brown and then I went on to Stanford where I got my MBA. And after that I joined some classmates at a startup which was where I found my true love, my true dream which is for startups and entrepreneurship. This thrived by the way despite the fact that this startup was not exactly a success. In fact, we cycled through three CEOs in 12 months, stalled out in our growth and were sold in a kick safe. But that's a whole nother story. My point in telling you that is everyone fails. And my point in telling you that is that I'm still here 
Two decades later, working towards my version of the American dream, having recently co-founded Aspect Ventures. And I, like thousands of others who are called to the valley every day, have my parents to thank for showing me how to be an American dreamer. So I've been lucky to be involved with dozens of successful startups that have gone from that stage to public companies or been acquired. And so people often ask me, what's the one thing you see in common amongst great entrepreneurs? And my answer isn't what you might think. It's not that they went to Stanford, Harvard, or MIT, or I guess these days dropped out from one of those. And it isn't even that they're already a proven, successful entrepreneur. My answer is all of the amazing founders that I have been lucky enough to work with share the same belief. They are building a company because they believe what they are doing will make the world better, richer, and fuller in some way. So you see, that is the ultimate example of an American dreamer in my book. Because they are building something to make that better, not only for themselves, but for their teams, and ultimately for the customers who will use that technology. Now, another thing I've observed about tech entrepreneurs is their data geeks. And I say that lovingly because I consider myself a data geek, and I'm guessing many of you in the audience are too. And by that, I mean we love to look at data to try to find opportunities to grow faster or bring in more customers. And one area where we spend a lot of time these days around data is around the user experience. And so in a board, we might look at cohorts, so two groups of users, and it might look something like this, which might look familiar to many of you. And if I were in a board meeting, I'd say, I'd start with the positive. I'd say, okay, well, the green cohort, we seem to be providing a good user experience to them, but what is going on with the orange cohort? It's 49% of our target market, but a much smaller percent of our users, and the retention rate is 26 points worse than the green cohort. Now, if this was a real board meeting, we would panic. Um, not really. We would, we would dive deeper into the data and we would try to brainstorm on ideas of things we could iterate on the user experience between now and the next board meeting. And we would iterate those things and we would test and measure them. So we might change the user experience in terms of onboarding or we might come up with features. But we would expect to see measurable improvement by the next board meeting. Now what if I told you this is a user experience but not for our customers? It's actually the user experience that our team see at tech companies. And I happen to have cut this data by STEM graduates, by gender, but I have the data for other diverse cohorts of STEM graduates, and unfortunately, the data would look similarly bad, if not worse. So here is our opportunity and our challenge. What if we use the same type of data-driven, rigorous, analytic techniques to the user experience that our teams see that we use for our customers? And what if we expected to find measurable improvement and results in a reasonable period of time? So you see, as dreamers and entrepreneurs, this is our challenge and our opportunity to change our user experience, to draw in more of the great talent that's out there. Okay, I know some of you are still probably skeptical and saying, why do we need to change anything now? I mean, last speaker told, and others will, tech and entrepreneurship is fueling growth around the globe. But at the same time, those technologies that we're part of helping to create is changing the nature of the world and our users at the same time. So let me give you one example, just one, of what I'm talking about. In 1995, the year Netscape went public, less than 1% of the world had internet access, and 61% of those users were here in the US. 20 years later, which is a blip in history, the great news is half the world has access to the internet, but less than 10% of those users are here. So you see, to stay ahead, we need to build teams that share not only our dream for what we're building, but also teams that understand the diverse needs of the customers that we are building these things for. And the same holds true in my part of the industry, which is venture capital. It's a small percent of US investment dollars, about half of 1%, but it really does fuel the American dream and our economy. Because venture-backed companies today account for jobs for more than one out of every 10 Americans. And this was done with less than 20% of venture founders being female and less than 6% of venture investors being female. Just imagine how much more fuel we could provide the American dream and our economy if we figured out how to tap those dollars against a broader range of talent. Okay, so I'm not gonna read all of this data because I think I've probably dated you out, but I'm gonna summarize it. 
all of the data shows that diversity, and that's along all dimensions, leads to improved performance for our teams, our companies, and our boards. And this improved performance yields measurable financial results. There's a saying in venture that you either are investing out of greed or fear. So suffice it to say that all of the data shows we should be investing in improving the talent diversity in our pool out of greed for improved financial performance and not just out of fear for the fact that we now need to report our employee data. Adams was spot on in 1931. The American dream only reaches full power when it includes opportunity for everyone. So I stand before you today as an entrepreneur, a venture investor, an engineer, an immigrant, a minority, and a female. And believe me, when I say those words out loud, I understand how truly fortunate I am to be here today. And I'm especially fortunate to have had all the opportunities that I've had and all of the amazing people who have joined me on my journey towards my American dream. And so clearly, I'm a believer both in the dream and in the power of entrepreneurial builders. And this is why I know together we can recharge the American dream and the economy to provide growth and opportunity. I believe this because I see how the technologies we've been part of helping to create spreads knowledge and information around the globe instantly. And in doing so, it spreads hope and a belief in opportunity for all. I believe because I see how the American dream fueled my parents and fueled me and my sister, and for that, we are incredibly grateful. I believe because I have a third generation American dreamer in the audience here today with me, and she is early in her journey in knowing what her dream is, but I'm confident that she will have every opportunity to work to the fullest of her ability to pursue that dream. And I believe because I know that as entrepreneurs and builders, all of us, we can recharge growth for everyone. And that is because we, at our core, we are all dreamers. Thank you.